Hey there, guys. Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogachan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. Today, I want to talk about some of the expectations I had when I decided to become a data engineer and some of the things that I've realized and the reality of the matter of being a data engineer. So we're going to cover a few concepts of the things that I learned uh, versus the things that I thought I would experience and do as far as the work I'd be doing as a data engineer, some of the tools I might be using, and other kind of lessons I learned along the way. So let's kind of go over this. We're just going to go over a few points to hopefully help some of you who are maybe looking to become a data engineer understand what your role is and what you will be doing. All right, so my first kind of realization when I became a data engineer was I assumed that everyone was using tools like Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, and every other kind of fancy tool that you've read about, you know, streaming, real-time analytics, all of these various complex components. And I assumed I'd have to be writing a lot of MapReduce jobs and coding a lot. What I found is the answer is it kind of really depends, but honestly, a lot of companies are still utilizing a lot of older technologies and in some cases are using more drag and drop tools to develop a lot of their ETLs and data pipelines. For example, at my first job, we didn't use any form of really code. We used a lot of SSIS, which is very familiar to anyone who has worked in a Microsoft shop where you're doing SQL Server, SSIS, and a couple other components that are very Microsoft focused. Of course, there are some differences. If you're on Azure, uh, then you've got different kind of ETL tools. But overall, that's where I started. It wasn't even really code. It was a lot of drag and drop code. And there are really a lot of other tools that are similar to that, where it's kind of a low code experience. And even at my following jobs, you'd often find that things like Hadoop or more complex data systems were often abstracted away. And you might just be accessing it through a SQL interface. Honestly, this makes a lot of sense because when you think about the skill level of SQL versus the skill level of directly interacting with something like Hadoop or a more complex data storage system, it's much harder to find a person that fits that role. And thus using some sort of abstracted system makes a lot of sense because then you don't need to hire a software engineer to essentially do work that's more suited for a data engineer. In fact, I remember with one of my many interviews where the interviewer asked about things that I wanted to learn over the next few years, I talked about wanting to learn about distributed systems and streaming analytics. And that's one reason I was excited to work for this company, as I assumed they were using these systems very heavily. The interviewer actually got a pretty serious look on their face when I responded with this, and then kind of turned the question around and asked me, well, are there any negatives to these systems? I think what they were looking for in this question was trying to see and understand if I understood that using these systems is not as easy as just deciding to use these systems. There's a lot of maintenance and time required to manage and upkeep these systems, and so just using these systems because you think they're interesting or because you think they're new or wherever you feel as far as these tools go, doesn't warrant actually using these tools. So I think that was something I learned very quickly as far as realities versus expectations. And so for my next expectation, I kind of assumed a lot of what data engineers do is build new tables and build new data pipelines. Now, this is kind of half right. You will do a lot of that. But the other thing no one told me about a lot of your work as a data engineer often involves some sort of migration. Either you're doing a code migration, you're doing a design migration, you're doing a system migration. And I swear I've done one of these at least every two years where it's a six month project. So that means, you know, I've spent at least a year or a year and a half in the last four years doing some form of migration. It's oddly quite common that you'll find yourself doing migrations as companies try to find the best tech stack that works for them or possibly they're just trying to get a fresh start on an old problem. So you'll do a lot of data migrations of one form of another. Maybe somebody's switching from Oracle to BigQuery for their data warehouse or some other similar switch. There are really tons of different ways a migration can happen. Again, you've got your ETL pipelines that you might want to migrate. You've got your data warehouse technology that you might want to migrate. You've got the design of the data warehouse that you might want to migrate or move into often what they call an EDW. Now, data lakes have kind of moved away from a fad and I think are kind of fading as the concept of data lakes are coming out, but there was migrations to like data lakes for a while there. There are just so many forms of migrations that can happen because as companies learn about new technologies, they seem to want to jump on it right away. This isn't to say there isn't value in a migration. They can often save money for a company. As they switch from very expensive database providers to possibly an open source system, it might be worth it. There are also possibly performance boosts that they're looking for or just easier to access layers of data. Again, there are tons of reasons companies try to do migrations, but this is honestly where you might find yourself spending 30% of your work, depending what kind of company you join. If you're joining a startup, you're likely building tons of new pipelines. If you're joining a company that's been around for a while, there's a likelihood you will do at least one migration 
in a two-year time span. Okay, so for my next expectation, I don't think it was so much an expectation as it was just a reality check. When it comes down to it, data engineers get very little fanfare. And at the end of the day, data engineering roles far outnumber those of data scientists when you look at something like Indeed or other sites, because companies are still trying to wrangle their data. Despite this, there is no real fanfare for data engineers. You rarely see articles talking about the sexiest job of the 21st century being data engineering or anything similar to that. So you'll often find instead that a lot of the fanfare still kind of goes into the data scientist area because their work is a little more tangible and noticeable by executives and by management. They're often the ones actually creating the analysis off of the data that you've built. So at the end of the day, regardless of what you do, it's kind of behind the scenes. Our work is kind of more this core layer that no one really sees. And we're just this middleman between applications and the data scientists and analysts who are going to try to actually make insights off the data that we're pulling in and aggregating. So if you're expecting to have a lot of people talk about your role or talk about the work that you've done, it's going to be a little more challenging just because you tend to be behind the scenes and it's just the nature of the role. Now for my final expectation, I honestly assumed when I became a data engineer, I'd probably make somewhere in the range of 100 or 120K about five years into my career. And oddly enough, I found that there are a lot of opportunities that far exceed that range as long as you find the right company and the right role. And I think this is becoming more and more prevalent as companies are finding that hiring solid data engineers is a very hard role to fill. And I'm going to throw up a few examples of salaries that different companies are kind of putting from different sites, whether it be Glassdoor and Payscale, et cetera. So you kind of get a good idea as far as the range of salaries. Again, it's going to range pretty wildly depending where you live and depending what company you work for. But there are a lot of companies willing to pay a data engineer pretty well because they know in order for data to often be useful, it needs to be processed, cleaned, and put into some sort of system that can be utilized in the future. And with that, I really appreciate all of you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to smash that like button. It helps me understand what videos are great, and it also probably helps the YouTube algorithm understands what videos to show other people. Let me know if you have any expectations versus reality for your job in the comments below. And other than that, I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.